So this is the iPhone 4D Pro Max and I've been using it on and off for the last couple of months now. And I say on and off is because I've been mainly using this as my main phone line. So my main SIM card is on this device ever since it came out. And the reason being is because it's got no eSIM and that's kind of annoying just because I'm a reviewer. So I would like to switch between devices easily. But with Mint Mobile, which is my NVNO carrier, it's a little bit annoying just because I have to pay for a new SIM card or a new eSIM. I don't get unlimited eSIMs or unlimited physical SIM cards. So I've decided I'm just going to leave my main SIM on this device and then use a second line for my Android devices. So that's kind of dumb, but that's just the way I was able to make it work so that I wasn't constantly switching or having to pay for those SIM cards. So let's just go ahead and talk about this device. So the design, the build, the quality, it's a premium feeling device and a premium looking device. It's very clean, very nice. I specifically like the silver colorway. It's just overall an elegant looking device. It is a flat feeling device. So the size, the edges, the back, the front, whatever, it's flat. So it does feel a little bit bricky in my hands. So the edges are just a tad bit sharp for my liking. Um, just not my cup of tea as far as how it feels. It is a heavy phone as well. It's a very dense feeling phone. If you like that, great. If you don't, then you might not like how this feels in your hand. But either way, I still always use a case. So in this case, I'm using D-Brand's grip case. Such a grippy case because this phone can be a bit slippery, especially with those glossy sides. But overall, with the case, it does add a little bit more bulkiness. And it also helps from the phone rocking quite a bit on with the camera lens because the camera lenses do protrude out of the device a little bit more than last year. The phone itself is IP68 water and dust resistant rated, so if you get splashed by water, you won't have an issue. On the bottom of the device, you do have lightning, which is kind of annoying, but I am curious to see what's gonna happen in the future with the Europe now uh, demanding USB-C on all electronic devices or portable devices or whatever is going on with that. So I'm curious to know what's gonna happen with that. You have dual firing speakers, which sound very good in my opinion. So for watching content and even listening to music, this speaker system sounds phenomenal on this device right here. You also have the power button and the volume rocker on opposite sides so if you like that then great i like that the buttons are very clicky and big too and i also like that the volume rocker is split up into up and down versus just one singular rocker i also like that you have the mute switcher which is very convenient to be able to just mute your phone or unmute your phone very easily without having to unlock your device and go into your settings as far as display it is going to be a retina xdr oled 120 hertz promotion just under 4240p 6.7 inch display it's a great display. For watching content, you're gonna be getting a great experience here because it is a big display. It's bright, plenty bright enough when you're indoors or outdoors. It's pretty colorful and vivid for the most part. Not super vivid like other displays, but pretty colorful enough. Um, overall, just a great display. Also a very smooth display on top of the animations and whatnot, the OS being super fluid. Gonna get a smooth experience here because of ProMotion. So overall, a very great display. And because of that pro motion, you also have the ability to use the always on display, which kind of does look like an always on display where the lock screen is literally dimmed down. So it looks like your phone is always on. Not a fan of it. In general, actually, I'm not a fan of always on display just because I use watches. So I just get my notifications from the smart watches. But either way, you do have that option available. The display itself is rounded on the corners. So you do lose a little bit of content when you're just pinching the zoom but you also have pretty symmetrical bezels all around and you also have the pill cutout. The reason it's using it is because of the face ID sensors. But before I get into that, I do appreciate at least that they use some kind of UI experience with it with the dynamic Allen stuff. So some apps will jump into the dynamic Allen when you exit out of them. So that's pretty cool. And I also like that when you're on a phone call, you can see the waveforms of when the person is actually talking and when you're talking. So I think green is the other person talking and red is you talking. Might be opposite, but either way, it shows the waveforms, which is pretty cool overall. But as far as Face ID, which is why we have that pill cutout, it's reliable, it's fast, it's easy to use for the most part. I don't have any issues with it. It even recognizes me in low light situations and even pitch black situations, which is awesome. So, so far it's been a great experience. It's well secured. So I have no issues with Face ID. As far as the overall performance, you're going to be getting a great experience here with the A16 binary chip with six gigabytes of RAM. So what that means is basically you're going to be getting a super powerful device here. Probably one of the best performing devices that you can possibly get out there. So for your everyday experience, for me, 
everything is fast, snappy, reliable, apps open up pretty quickly, if not very fast. Uh, performance is great when I'm jumping between other apps. I honestly don't have any issues when doing my basic day-to-day -day stuff, which is honestly most of my day. Most of my day is just my generic usage, social media usage, internet usage, um, occasionally shopping apps and whatnot. I don't have any issues when using this iPhone. And when you want to do a little bit more, the phone will get a little bit warm, but more means playing games for me. It means using the camera a little bit. That kind of stuff, I'm able to get a great experience. And out of all the devices I used and I guess quote unquote tested by playing a couple of games, I found that the iPhone 40 Pro Max was able to stay the most consistent. So I didn't see many, if not any frame drops. I didn't see any kind of like bugginess when leaving the app. I honestly felt like this phone was just consistently chunking out great performance the whole time, whether I was pushing it or not pushing it, the performance was really good in this device. Now mixing in the software, you do have iOS 16, which is a very overall simple and fluid OS experience. I already mentioned again how it's a fluid experience when you're just growing, scrolling around the OS and whatnot, it's super smooth. You won't have an issue with how it feels, but the customization, the features and all that stuff, Eh, not my favorite as far as like the different OS's that there are available. So as far as what you do have for customization, you have the lock screen customization, which you have the ability to either make it productive or make it look pretty. So adjust the colors, adjust the wallpaper you have, adjust the clock style and those colors. You can also adjust the depth effects. So if you want to add some depth to your photo, you can, um, but you also can add some widgets, which makes it productive. You can also add a focus mode to each wallpaper, which you can switch between making it look like they're different watch faces, which overall is a pretty cool and productive way to make your phone more productive for you, which is pretty neat. But once you hop into the home screen, this is where you have very limited customization where I feel like they should add more customization because you're literally on your home screen all the time and how you interact with your home screen kind of dictates how you interact in your day-to-day -day life. So for me personally, I like to keep my home screen minimalistic so that I just keep my main apps on my main home screen and then a couple widgets on each side so that I can access a couple different, you know, settings and whatnot right there on, on my home screen. On iOS, you can't move apps anywhere freely. You're forced to put them towards the top. So for one, that makes it a little bit unergonomic. So I have to reach the whole way up. Um, and then I also have to just fill my home screen with a bunch of apps and a bunch of widgets if I wanna lower the ones I wanna use the most towards the bottom. There is a trick, which is by using a transparent widget, and which is a third party widget, and so that you can trick it or kind of trick it into thinking there's widgets there, which are just transparent, so you can see your wallpaper, and so then you can make your home screen look like a little bit minimalistic. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do too, but I won't go into it just because I didn't have the time to do it, but either way, I wish it was all part of the stock settings. I also wish you could make the grid size bigger. Why can't I make the grid size bigger? I have such a big display here. Let me use the size of this display and add four across or no, five across or maybe even six across. That'd be awesome. But iOS doesn't let you do that, which kind of sucks. But at least you can stack widgets. So if since you have a limited amount of grid size, you can stack widgets so that they don't all take up all the space, which is pretty cool. The app library, again, the lack of freedom to customize it kind of annoys me. So I'm not able to move apps anywhere freely where I want to as far as which folders. That's just because I read that developers will decide which category your app belongs into and then iOS will use that category that the app developer chose to make folders based off those categories. So then I can't decide where to go. It's annoying, I don't like it. I like the app library slash app drawer stuff from Android too. So I wish it was more customizable for my liking. But other things like the control center and the notification center, those are pretty clean and pretty easy to understand. I like that you can get into your settings pretty quickly. The only thing I don't like is that you have to access them by swiping all the way from the top of the display. So to make it easier, I would definitely uh, recommend turning on the accessibility settings for back tap. So either double tapping or triple tapping, you can pull down uh, certain actions for me. It's for pulling down the notification center and the control center respectively. So that just makes it easier to get to. One thing I do like for the notification center is that for one, it does a decent job of organizing your notifications and stacking them so that one app will have all the notifications stacked up, but also you can use a notification summary, which allows you to just get essentially a summary of all your notifications if you wanted to. So you just select which apps and at what time you want the notification summary to show up. And there you have just one quick summary instead of having a bunch of notifications spamming you throughout the whole day. But the main thing iOS has going for is definitely going to be the Apple ecosystem, whether it be with your own devices or other people's devices where you can connect with either 
other users easier or your own devices easier. Yes, iMessage, yes, AirDrop, FaceTime, Find My, that whole network, everything works seamlessly together very nicely. I have used an Apple Watch, I've used AirPods, I've even connected with other Apple users and both iMessage and people appreciate when I have an iMessage. People seem to love that. So that's the main reason why I switched over to try it out to see if I liked it and maybe I could just make the full switch over. No, I, spoiler alert, it's not gonna happen. I just, as much as I appreciate that stuff, I could really care less for it. I don't care if people get upset that I, have, I don't have iMessage. I don't care if people can't FaceTime me. I don't care, honestly. I just prefer to have, I, would, I should say, I would much rather have the customization features of my OS instead of tailoring my software or limiting my software to make other people happy, if that makes sense. So that's where I stand with that. So for me, it's cool, it's nice, it's very seamless and convenient, but it's just not for me. The multitasking is also very limited. So you can go into picture and picture, but that's pretty much it. And I also found that I think if you don't have a premium account, a picture and picture does not work. So it won't go into picture and picture. You have to have premium for your YouTube account for it to work with the YouTube app. On other devices, you can literally split the screen, but with this, it's just picture in picture. So I definitely wish you could split the screen or something like that because it is very limited when it comes to multitasking. Even though this device is definitely capable of handling multitasking. And you will be getting a lot of software support here, maybe five to even six years of OS updates, which is absolutely insane. So overall, the whole OS experience, it's definitely gonna be, you know, for a specific group of people, and it's a large group of people, but for me personally, it just doesn't seem to be the best OS experience for myself personally. One thing I also didn't like is that the settings, not all the stock settings, like for stock apps, are all within that stock app. Sometimes those settings are in the actual settings app. So if you wanna change something up, you have to go into your settings, look for it there in one of those specific app sections and then change it there. I wish those settings were in those stock apps, but they're not. So one of the things that I did struggle with was trying to you know, set up my stuff and try to change settings up. So I would definitely recommend if you've never used iOS before, utilize that quick search bar, even though that search bar is available on other OS settings uh, apps, definitely use it on iOS because it makes it a lot easier to try to you know, find where certain things are in the settings app. As far as the cameras, I hate talking about cameras, but just know these cameras are fantastic. So starting up at the front, great selfies here, great quality, color, detail, all looks good. The only complaint I have with them is my skin color may not be the most accurate as far as my skin color, but for the most part, the photo itself all looks really well. In low light situations, I think it does a terrible job. If you're in like pitch black situations, it uses the light, like it flashes a light on the screen and tries to take something out of it and it just looks terrible. And as far as video on the front, it again looks very clean and nice, similar to how the photos look. My skin color may not be the most accurate depending on the lighting, but for the most part, video quality, it looks very good in 4K. On the back with the ultra wide, the wide and the telephoto, all photos look consistently really good. So they all look about the same color. There's no shift in color, which I do find is an issue on some devices, but for the most part on the iPhone, you are gonna be getting a consistent color and quality wise too on all three lenses. So notable things is that on the ultra wide, you will be getting a 0.5X, so it is a wide field of view. So it's probably now one of the widest uh, ultra wides you can get. I think like S22 Ultra has a 0.6X, uh, the Pixel 6 Pro back in the day they had a 0.7x, so 0.5x is plenty wide enough for an ultra wide shot. You also have the ability to use like a macro mode shot, so the ultra wide has an autofocus availability to it, so you can get close to a subject and get kind of creative with your shots and whatnot. I think it's pretty cool because it ends up getting some pretty cool close-up shots of some things. The telephoto is a 3x, so for optical zoom, it'll be a 3x zoom, and then for a max digital zoom, it's only 15x, which compared to the competition, isn't the greatest zoom capabilities, which I wish could be improved. And those 15x shots, <laughs> yeah, I'm never gonna use them for my real world usage. And you probably won't be zooming in very likely on, on your most real data life usage. But still, when you have the ability to zoom in a lot further, like on the S22 Ultra or something like that, it's a very cool party trick. Like whenever I can use that to show it off to other people, they can, uh, they can appreciate it. But either way, the telephoto, 
you know, 3x for optical and then 15x for digital. And low light situations where you do have a little bit of light, like in the evening or something like that, it's able to get a pretty decent shot for the most part. And when you're in like pitch black situations, surprisingly, I was able to get a little bit of something out of like complete darkness, which was pretty cool. Um, but either way, sometimes the shots are pretty unusable, but still pretty cool what it's capable of doing. As far as video, Again, this looks really good. Similar to how the photos look consistently good throughout all three lenses, all three lenses on video also look pretty good. And just in general, I feel like the video on this iPhone 4G Pro Max or just maybe iPhones in general, just seem so clean. They seem well detailed. Most devices are well detailed too, but for some reason it just looks well stabilized. It looks cinematic, it looks clean. It just overall, I think the video, I don't know. I just don't know how to describe it. It just looks really good in my opinion. But one notable thing is that with the telephoto, you are capped out at 9x, so you can't zoom in very far when you're using video, which kind of sucks, again, compared to the competition, which goes to maybe 20x. Um, but either way, uh, it's still something, I guess, compared to nothing. You also have the new action mode, which is capped out at 2.8K, but it does a really good job of stabilizing your video. So if you're ever in a situation where you want to run or maybe get a fast moving subject while you're moving your phone, it does a good job of making the phone seem like it's on a gimbal or something. It's actually pretty neat overall. But other things I want to mention with the camera usage is the experience. So I felt like this phone, again, I mentioned it many times that the software experience is very fluid and fast and snappy. Same thing with the camera experience. I just whip out my phone, snap a shot, shutter speed is very low. It's just a quick and fast and easy experience. It literally feels like a point and shoot camera. I just point, shoot. Not only is the experience easy, but I know I'll get a good quality shot as well. But the one thing I don't like about the whole camera experience is the transferring of the videos and photos from my device to my Windows device. It was such a pain, uh, especially if I was using the high efficiency mode, I had to switch to the most compatible mode because I was getting so many freezes where it would just stop transferring to the, the files and it would say that it froze or something like that or there was a misconnection or something. It was a pain in the ass. So just keep that in mind too, that because I don't have an Apple MacBook or something like that, it wasn't super easy to use when transferring files. But either way, camera quality, fantastic on the iPhone 40 Pro Max. Now, as far as the battery life, this is a 4,323 milliamp hour battery. So it is smaller compared to the competition, but the efficiency on here is insane. The battery life, outstanding so i could unplug this device at 6 30 in the morning and on my normal day usage where i'm working or something like that i can definitely know that i'll get throughout the whole day and won't have to plug in again till about the next day maybe around noon or 1 or 2 p.m so it's insane i'll get maybe 30 to 36 hours of usage total on this battery lift which is nuts in my opinion i do end up getting a combo of like maybe in total two to five hours screen on time total, depending on how heavy I was using my device, which may not seem like a lot to you, but the fact that I was still able to get about a day and a day and a half of battery life total, insane. So my usage is pretty simple and also includes Bluetooth connections with both my watches or not both watches, but just smart watches in general or speakers and earbuds and all that kind of stuff and listen to music in the background and whatnot. So my screen on time isn't like the end all be all and also your experience may be different as I mentioned, but for me, the battery life experience is fantastic. But unfortunately, it doesn't translate over to the charging speeds being amazing. So they're kind of slow. They have fast charging, but it takes about maybe an hour and 30 to 45 minutes to fully charge from like zero or a low level battery life to 100%, which I don't necessarily mind just because the battery life itself is very good. So I don't mind taking a little longer to charge because I'll know that once I unplug it, it'll last me for quite a while. And you also have wireless charging, which I use all the time. When I do have to charge overnight, I'll usually charge with wireless charging. So at the end of the day, the iPhone 4D Pro Max is a fantastic device. You're gonna be getting a powerful, great battery life, great cameras, great phone overall. But for me personally, I just don't feel like this is the main device for me. I appreciate everything it offers, but I prefer the stuff that Android devices offer. So this, I couldn't make this my main device. I'd be happy with it and okay with it, but I wouldn't be satisfied. I don't know if that makes sense, but 
yeah, the iPhone isn't just, it's just not for me, if that makes sense. So what I might end up doing is I might keep my main SIM card on this device or my main eSIM now, um, my main phone number on this device because so I can try and continue to appreciate the Apple ecosystem with iMessage and all that stuff since people who already have this number, um, you know, like the fact that I have blue bubbles and stuff like that. So I might just keep my main phone number on here and then get a second line or use a second line for my Android devices so I can use those devices as my main device, but then just use this for like talking to friends and stuff like that. Um, maybe a stupid decision and may not make sense for an average person because not everyone will have two lines or not everyone is gonna have two phones, but I wanna try both, if that makes sense. I wanna keep my uh, toes in both ecosystems or both worlds so I have an idea of how the competition works against each other, if, if that makes any sense. But if I had to choose one main device, it's not gonna be the iPhone 40 Pro Max. As much as how good this device is. So if you just wanna know if this is a great device, yes, this is a great phone. And if you have an iPhone 13 Pro series device, there's no need to get this device in my opinion. But either way, this is still a great device. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully this made sense. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And uh, 